What's up legends? Sunday was day two of the preseason qualifiers for the ALGS and so much happened, so let's dive into it. First, let's talk about the preseason format. This is the first of four preseason qualifiers. Each are going to be set up the same way. There are four group stages where you play two rounds on each map and the top 10 from each group advance each time. Once you get to the semifinals, it's six games and the top 10 from the last two groups advance to the finals. The finals are also six games, and whoever gets first qualifies for the ALGS. The finals for the first round of qualifiers happens Monday, October 10th at 8.40 Eastern or 5.40 PST. All the players will be streaming with a 10 minute delay. Okay, enough of the formalities. If you have any other questions, leave a comment down below and I'll answer them. But let's move on to Sunday's games. On Sunday, I followed the BR Demons, Glitch Gaming, Rack Attack, and Season. And they all made it look easy through the first four rounds, so there isn't much to talk about. The semifinals is where it got really interesting. There were only two groups left, and Glitch Gaming and BR Demons were in the same group, and then Rack Attack and Season were in the other group. The blue boxes highlight Stormpoint, and the orange boxes represent World's Edge. Rack Attack pulled out Vantage on Stormpoint, running it with a comp of Valk, Gibby, and Vantage. And it worked out really well as they won the first game with 13 kills, but the next two games on Stormpoint were a little bit rougher. After their 25 point first round, they only managed 4 points in the next two games, with 3 of those points coming from kills. Rack Attack continued to live off that first round on Stormpoint, as their next 3 rounds on World's Edge only gave them 14 points total, and their final game they went out in 20th place. Rack ended 7th overall with 43 points and 24 kills total. Over half of their total kills came from that game 1 victory on Stormpoint. Season wasn't that impressive either in terms of placement, but they supplemented bad or decent placement with kills in order to survive. The team, while capable, seems to play down to their competition. They've only played a few rounds seriously, and I'm hoping they turn that around in finals if they want a shot at qualifying. They finished in 4th overall for their group with 55 points and 37 kills. As the lobbies get tougher, they're going to be punished more for not trying, and it's also going to create bad habits with their rotations. Season's first game on Stormpoint was zero points because they were so slow on rotating. They landed north pad and the zone was ending at the wall, but after doing prowlers and messing around, they ended up taking the grav cannon into the little cubby at wall, but there was a team already there and just killed them when they landed. The BR Demons stole the show yesterday, ending the night with an easy first place of their lobby with 117 points and 82 kills in just 6 games. That's insane. That means the BR Demons averaged roughly 13.5 kills per game. In second place was LTC Esports with 66 points and 31 kills, and they were in 16 points ahead of third place. LTC was playing so good that they would have won the other group as well but they were still 51 points behind the demons. And the demons were so far ahead, if they only had those 51 points from the point differential, they would have been in second place. The BR demons were unstoppable, and not only were they getting a massive amount of kills, but they supplemented it by having four games out of the six be in the top four. And in the games where they went out in 10th, they still had 18 kills. That's equivalent to getting a first place with eight kills. They were so fun to watch, and it was clear that they had no competition. It doesn't bode well for any other team tonight after that performance. And finally, we have Glitch Gaming. Their performance was tough to watch. In 6 games, they finished with 11 total kills, and 9 of those were on Stormpoint, meaning in the 3 matches of World's Edge, they only got 2 kills. Where Glitch Gaming was impressive was their zone calls on Stormpoint. They were able to get where they wanted, and they were able to get some kills out of it. Machin was really smart with the Crypto Drone. It was really fun watching him open doors of other zone teams and use the enemy Watson fences to break their own doors off. He was also able to preemptively place his drone somewhere where it couldn't be broken, so when a team pushed, he could just EMP them, allowing them for an easier 3v3. Machin did take responsibility for the few plays he messed up timing-wise, and that was great to see. But they have a lot to work on strategy-wise. Let's talk about their World's Edge games. Their playstyle is based on hard zone early rotations. They cannot continue to land on the southeast side of World's Edge and Dome, far away from anything, and expect it to make it somewhere first or of good positioning. Not every POI asks the same questions. Different comps work better for different locations. Hard zone teams need to play somewhere where they have enough loot to sustain themselves and allow for efficient rotations. The Watson Crypto Valk combination has a hard time fighting in the open. Valk is the only movement character on the team, and without her ult, it's a solo movement ability. At the end of his stream, Machin was saying they were going to review the other teams that qualified and figure out an uncontested place to land and change spots, but I don't think that's the move. They had 11 kills in 6 games. 
and in two of those games, they didn't even shoot their guns until the final circles. This is a battle royale. Winning is only part of the points. The battling is the other part. The team needs to prioritize more kills, especially in the finals when you have the BR Demons averaging 13.5 kills a game and getting placement points. Let's quickly think about Rack Attack. Their first game on Stormpoint in the semifinals was a win with 13 kills. If they won in the same way Glitch Gaming has been doing with 2 or 3 kills, Rack wouldn't have qualified. They would have tied for 11th place and they would have been out of the finals. The core issue for Glitch Gaming is how passive they are playing. It's out of their element. Lamek, Machin, and Supi aren't just some random people who threw together a team. They're very capable players. This team needs to find early momentum today. If the matches start on World's Edge and I'm them, I'm going to land on a team. And as long as it's not BR Demons, Season, ESA, or Rack Attack, they have a great chance of winning it. They have nothing to lose. Unleash Lamek in a building or structure and maybe switch Machin to Fuse and just be more aggressive. It's hard to fight when you've been sitting in a building for 20 minutes and then suddenly you're against three red armors and a team that's vibing. Get the early KP and build the confidence, stay fresh, and rotate. The bottom line is if Glitch wants to win, they need to average more points. The BR Demons were averaging 19.5 points per game. That's equivalent to winning with 8 kills every game. Realistically, Glitch isn't going to win 6 games in a row, so they need to supplement their points somehow. I hope you guys have been enjoying the games, or at least the recaps of them. The final starts tonight at 8.40 Eastern or 5.40 PST. The winner qualifies for the ALGS. Until next time, Legends.